Hi! This is the Bracky's Game Jam. It describes itself as a week-long event about making a complete game based around a specific theme. And basically, my caveman brain thought it would be a good idea to participate in that jam. So, um, let's make a video game in a week. This year's theme was Stronger Together, which basically means make a multiplayer game, but I haven't talked to another human being in the past 6 months and don't plan on doing that anytime soon, so I decided that it would be a good idea to make a single player game where I would control 2 players by myself. Now I needed to think about what type of game I wanted to make, like should I make A an FPS, B a platformer, C a puzzle game, or D a full on Celeste copy including like 2 or 3 bits I made up in 2 players. So anyways, once I got my idea, I turned on my PC and got to work. So on the first day, I created a brand new 9D project and started working on a prototype. I already have some experience working on Celestile platforms thanks to a game made about two years ago named, uh, Block Dude. I guess I was really creative with my names before. Anyways, first of all, I created a player character using Square. After typing a little bit of code, he can now move around, which is pretty cool, I guess, but uh, there's just a little something lacking, you know. Hey, Celeste, that's a pretty cool dash move you got over there. Um, mind if I just, uh, borrow it? Forever? <laughs> uh, bam! Wow, that's a dash move. Uh, totally inspired by nothing, I totally made that up myself. I then spent most of my time trying to make the movement feel great and responsive, but the jump just felt off. I fixed it by making the character jump longer when you hold the spacebar, and by increasing the gravity force on the player to make him fall faster, thus making it feel better and receptive. So for the dash move, it doesn't really work diagonally for some reason. I don't really know why, but uh, as developers say, good enough, moving on. Hey, remember what I said about this being good enough like 20 seconds ago? Well, psych, it's not. We're gonna fix it by doing, and I quote, I then implemented switching between players by disabling or enabling movement on them whenever I press Z. After that, I did a simple wall jump by simply recycling the jump code I previously wrote and just changing the direction I was jumping. That's not lazy programming, that's echo responsible. Anyways, to further improve the movement, I tried making the player not able to wall jump up a wall, like what you can do in Super Meat Boy, so that he couldn't cheese through levels. I also limited the player's movement in the air to make it feel more realistic, thus making the player character movement complete. I then started working on a camera movement system using Brackies to toy, you know, the guy that was the jam, it's so cool, camera movement was shit. It made me feel sick and the camera just moved way too much, which isn't good for a game with tight platforming. To be fair, the camera movement was designed for a fighting game in the first place, so it wasn't meant to be used in a game like mine. I therefore decided to use fixed cameras instead that would move between scenes. Another really good idea of mine that I came up by myself and only me. I then added a little uh, button that when pressed moves a platform in a certain position. Does Celeste have those? After all of that, the game still didn't have the theme stronger together in it, which was required for the jam. Basically, this is what I came up with. Each one of the players would have different stats. One player, the white one, would run very fast horizontally, but wouldn't be able to jump that high, while the black one would be the opposite, being slow and jumping very high. The players would use each other's abilities in order to beat the levels, therefore being stronger together. After implementing that into the game, I started thinking about what I could do next, and went to sleep. So on the third day, with the player's basic movement done, I started working on some mechanics and blocks that the player could interact with. First, I started working on fusion blocks. Basically, if both players stand inside of a fusion block, they would fuse their abilities and create one single very fast high jumping player. After that, I took an old moving platform code I made for another game and uh recreated it. <laughs> so after implementing moving platforms into the game, I started thinking what would be the next mechanic I would implement into the game. And I remember having this conversation between my brain cells. Hello everyone, uh, I'm the brain. Welcome to this meeting. Today we're going to talk about what's the next mechanic that we're going to put into our game. Okay guys, I have this idea. Let's just copy from Celeste again. Yeah, yeah. 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 this is definitely yeah. original. No! This isn't right. Game jams are about having an experience, having something that you make that is very personal to you, something that is challenging to make, and something that you just enjoy making. Copying Celeste just doesn't make sense anymore. Guys, let's copy from another game. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm okay with that. Whatever. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah, let's go. Thinking. Portals. <laughs> Another one of my original creations. Also, it took me like five hours to make them because it had a lot of bugs. I really hate them. Oh my god! If I could punch one right now. On day 4, I did absolutely nothing because of social life. Don't have friends, guys. Uh, they're just gonna slow you down when you enter a game jam. So 
on day 5, I started by working on making a background for the game to make it look prettier. I went for an abandoned style industrial area with a lot of dust and broken walls, just like my house in real life. I'm not very experienced with pixel art, so it was just putting random bits of grey everywhere until it looked like, uh, something? I also made new sprites and animations for the player so that they looked better. Anyways, this took me like 40 minutes and time is ticking. At this point, I haven't made a single level yet, so I started working on designing some tutorial levels to teach the player different mechanics of the game. For example, this is the first level of the game. The white player, the one that goes fast horizontally, can dash through the pit of lava, but the black player, when he tries it, dies. So the player is supposed to dash on top of this platform to get to the end of the level. It teaches the player how to game works. This man go horizontal and this man go up. I haven't implemented any of the levels in Unity, I just designed them on paper. And at this point, it's midnight, so I just go to sleep. So on day 6, I started by implementing the levels I've designed in Unity using assets with top-notch AAA style graphics. I know, this looks like real lava, I, I, it's too real, I don't know. After doing that, I realized that I only had like 2 days left and a whole lot of work to do. So I started by slamming a piece of paper on a table and designing the other 10 levels I wanted for a total of 15 levels. So let me explain to you all how I design my levels. So my design philosophy comes from Nintendo and Brackies and various game dev YouTubers I've watched. Basically, it goes like this. Let's say you just made a new mechanic in your game and you want to put it in some levels. In my case, it will be switchers that just basically switch both players' positions. You will split the levels with this mechanic in three different categories. First of all, you will introduce the mechanic by putting it in a safe environment where the player cannot get hurt and test out the mechanic without any threat. The player will toy around with it until he figures out what the mechanic does and how to use it. For example, for my switchers, the player will just eventually stumble on them and will just switch and think, hey, this thing goes switch, you switch player, wow. Once you've introduced your mechanic, you can move on to developing it. In development levels, you'll try to make the player use the mechanic in new ways. So it would be like, hey, you can switch normally, now switch in the air. Once you've done that, you can move on to the final step, which is just challenging the player and concluding. So you can challenge the player in a lot of different ways. So for me, it would be, hey, you know how to switch into here? Now do it three times with a wall jump, you bitch. Once I've done all these three types of levels for a mechanic and feel like I've really exploited it to its full potential, I move on to another one. Anyways, after designing the levels, I designed this little platform that, when stepped on, shakes a little, then falls. I, I, I'm just, just a creative genius. <laughs> So once day 7 arrived, the last day of the game jam, my first thought was, and I quote, <clears throat> Ah, so much to do, so little time, fuck! So day 7 was the speedrunning day. It didn't matter if anything was pretty as long as it was done. I started by implementing all the levels I previously designed on paper into Unity, and it took me a long time. Just placing blocks, different elements, and finally seeing all the different things I've created individually assembled to make actual levels was actually a really good feeling. If I forgot the normal stress I had to finish everything on time, when that was done, I started working on an essential part of the game, the main menu. I made a button sprite, downloaded a little pixel-like font, and slapped them both into Unity to make it beautiful main menu. Also made a little pause menu uh, using a tutorial from Brackies and the other assets I've previously done. The last thing I added was audio using SFXR to make random sound effects and BAM here it was the finished game. Sure it had like 97,000 bugs but hey it was finished. I playtested the game just a little with a friend at like 1am to fix some bugs and submitted it to the jam. After playtesting it with a few friends I had a little bit of feedback like for example that the white player is too fast or some levels are counterintuitive or the levels are too hard or I hate you or the game is shit. But yeah it was a pretty good game for the time I took to make it and I'm really happy that I got to finish a game. Also what happened afterwards is that I deleted the game from the jam because I thought I could re-upload it in a .zip file instead of a .rar file. So yeah, that was kind of dumb. Also I blame that guy from telling me to do it. I take no responsibility. By the way, shout outs to this reviewer who wrote like a 79 meter long paragraph detailing what he liked and didn't like about the game. You, you're, you're very cool. 10 out of 10. Anyways, that's all for me. You can download the game on itch.io or by going to the link in the description. Tell me what you think about the game in the comments. Like the video. Subscribe. Have a good one. Bye.